Welcome to Train Sim World, an immersive and highly detailed rail simulation featuring authentic routes and trains from around the world. This is the training center. Here you can learn about how to navigate and interact with the world as well as how to operate the many trains. Let's start by looking around. Find each of the markers and look at them. Your current objective is shown at the top left of the screen. Walk to the blue marker to complete the current objective. You've been awarded some action points. These are displayed in the top right corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience level for the game. This is one of the many types of route tasks to be discovered. Keep an eye out for many more types and styles of route tasks, which can involve placing, collecting, or fixing a variety of things. Head into the main building and you'll continue your induction there. You can pause Train Sim World at any point to review objectives and a lot of other information about what's happening at the moment. Try it now, and then return to the game after you've had a look around. Now that we've covered some of the basics of moving around and interacting with the environment, let's take a walk through the building and find the trains. This is Central Square. From here you can explore the main training center depot and surrounding yards. Your journey operating trains is just getting started here in the training center. Remember, you can always come back here from the main menu to refresh your knowledge if you're unsure about anything. Continue to learn and other training modules here in the training center, and then you'll be ready to take on more challenges in other environments. This module will cover the on-screen overlay, known as the heads-up display or HUD, that is shown when you are in control of a train.
climb up the ladder into the train and then sit in the indicated seat. Welcome to the most important seat in the train. While sitting here, you'll be in full control. Before you think about moving the train, though, let's look at the HUD overlay that's appeared on the bottom right. The heads-up display is a guide to what your train is doing. The main part of the HUD is the speed display. A white bar will appear around the outside to show your current speed, and the red mark indicates your maximum permitted speed. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral directions. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power or throttle control is in. These are the brake indicators. The exact ones shown will vary by train and will often be visible in the train itself on various gauges. They tell you what's happening in the braking system. The most important one is the BC or brake cylinder. If that's reading zero, then your brakes are released. Anything else? And brakes are applied and you won't be able to move. Every train can have small variations in the HUD unique to the way it works, but they will mostly look the same. As you learn to control new trains, study the HUD and learn how it helps you operate it. If you want to see this again, you can rerun this training module at any time. In this training module, you're going to look at making the train move and then bringing it to a stop again. While many trains have different controls and are operated in different ways, there are basically always three controls that are common and are required to move the train. The reverser sets the direction between forwards and backwards. The brakes are used to slow or stop the train. The throttle controls how fast the train accelerates. In this train, the throttle and brakes are controlled by a combined power and brake handle. We want to move the train forwards, so move the reverser to that position. Pull the power brake handle toward you to release the brakes and apply power. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground and the train will only slow down very gradually.
While the specifics of operating brakes vary from train to train, the basic process of stopping is fundamentally the same. Bring this train to a complete stop by moving the power brake handle into the braking range. The amount of braking you'll need to apply also varies depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill and how heavy your train is. Stopping a train is one of the biggest challenges of controlling them, particularly stopping them in the right place. That concludes this module. Restart the module to learn the steps again or move on to the next module. In this training module, you'll be learning basic passenger operations in a BR Class 323 electrical multiple unit. When you are ready, climb aboard the train. Take a seat in the driver's position. To unlock the control desk, insert the master key. Great work! To allow passengers to board, you will need to open the doors. Keep the doors open to allow enough time for passengers to board the train. Now that the passengers have boarded the train, close the doors. Set the reverser to forward. Apply power to get moving. This train has a combined brake and throttle handle. Apply a small amount of brake to gently bring the train to a stop at the next station. Good work. This time, open the doors on the opposite side. Close the doors. 
reach the next destination unguided. Great job. That concludes training on passenger operations. In this training module, you will be learning how to change driving ends of a train. During this brief introduction, you will be taken through how to set up a cab for driving, shut down a cab, and how to change which train cab is the lead. Firstly, we need to set up this cab for driving. Set the master key to on to unlock the control desk. The reverser is used to set the direction of travel. Apply some power to get moving. When ready, apply a small amount of braking force to gently bring this train to a stop.
Set the brake throttle handle to neutral. Remove the master key. Well done. You have successfully shut down this cab. Now travel to the cab at the other end of the train. Sit in the driver's seat. Now activate the new cab for driving, following the same steps as before. Well done. You now know how to change ends in a train. That concludes this training module. This module will go over the fundamentals of operating junctions to change the path your train will take and how to navigate using the map. Most rail lines around the world are controlled remotely by a signaling center or dispatcher. From the perspective of the train, the direction taken is automatic. But within yards and depots, many small and frequent movements are required. This makes remote control of the track impractical. In these locations, the direction taken is manually controlled. You can set junctions by either walking up to them and interacting with them, or going to the 2D map and changing them from there. Let's change this junction by hand first. Walk over to it and change it by operating the lever. Notice how the point blades move on the track. Try moving it a few times so that you can see how it works. Let's head over to the train, and then we can look at the map. Open the map and change the indicated junctions. Your junctions are set correctly. Let's get the train moving and see it all working. If you can't remember how to make the train start and stop, there is a training module you can rerun to remind yourself. We want to move the train forwards, so move the reverser to that position. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground and the train will only slow down very gradually. Bring this train to a complete stop by moving the power brake handle into the braking range.
That concludes this module. All the junctions in the training center are manual, so you can go anywhere you wish using the map and by changing junctions manually. If you want to practice, go to Explore on Foot in the training center. You'll find trains dotted around, and you can practice driving them and moving them around the yard. Don't forget, you can always rerun this training module later if you can't remember any of what's been covered. In this training module, you're going to learn to drive a diesel-electric locomotive and how the controls differ from a multiple unit. This is a BR Class 66 diesel-electric locomotive, typically used for freight operations in the United Kingdom. The reverser sets the direction between forwards and backwards. There are three types of brakes in this locomotive, and which one you use will depend on the situation. We'll learn more about the different brake types in future training modules. The throttle controls how fast the train accelerates. We want to move the train forwards, so move the reverser in that direction. Keep the brake control in release until you can see the brake pipe control needles are reading 5 bar, pointing upwards. This will release the brakes fully. Watch the brake cylinder, or BC gauge, to see it gradually reduced to zero, which tells you that the brakes are now fully released and you can move the train. Apply some throttle to get the train moving. As you apply power, notice the amp bar rising. This is the amount of power being fed into the traction motors. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground and the train will only slow down very gradually. Brakes in this locomotive are lapped. Rather than directly selecting the brake force with a handle, you use the brake control to add or release braking force. Braking force will be held until you release it, as you did before setting off. Bring the strain to a complete stop by holding the brake control in the apply state until you see the brake pipe control needle in the center of your cab desk showing about four bar. The amount of braking you'll need to apply also varies depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill and how heavy your train is. Stopping a train is one of the biggest challenges of controlling them particularly stopping them in the right place. That concludes this module. Restart the module to learn the steps again, or move on to the next module. In this training module, you're going to learn how coupling operations are typically performed. Coupling and uncoupling is important both for freight and passenger operations. Different regions and trains have different methods of coupling, 
but the fundamentals always remain the same. You'll be operating a BR Class 66 locomotive and coupling and uncoupling to mineral wagons, which are typically used for transporting coal, ores, and other mining products. This locomotive can couple with either Buckeye or Hook type couplers. Before you couple, you should inspect them and ensure that they're in the correct position. Attempting to couple when couplers are in the incorrect position can cause damage or derailment. Now let's head into the locomotive and couple to the wagons. You'll be backing up to the wagons, so set the reverser to the reverse position. Keep the brake control in release until you can see the brake pipe control needles are reading 5 bar, pointing upwards. This will release the brakes fully. Watch the brake cylinder, or BC gauge, to see it gradually reduced to zero, which tells you that the brakes are now fully released and you can move the train. The external camera provides improved visibility when reversing, Slowly, come to a stop just in front of the wagons. You need to be close enough to allow coupling. Ideally, the buffer should be touching. Couple the wagons to the locomotive. You can either do this on foot or use the external camera. Good work. Now, change direction with the reverser and bring these wagons to the indicated location.
Now uncouple the wagons, either on foot or using the external camera. Change direction with the reverser and come to a stop in the indicated sighting. That concludes this module. Remember, this process might differ slightly depending on the region and rolling stock. If you're ever unsure, check the training modules. In this training module, you'll be learning the basics of operating a steam locomotive. You'll be driving the Stania Class 8F steam locomotive. When you're ready, climb onto the footplate. Sit in the driver's position. Let's prepare the locomotive for departure. Set the reverser to full forward position. You'll need all available power when setting off. This locomotive has a combination brake that controls both steam and vacuum brakes. Steam brakes will apply on just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply to the rest of the train, so long as it's equipped with vacuum brakes. The brakes are released when a vacuum is created. The driver can use the brake handle to destroy the vacuum, which will start to apply the brakes. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. The small ejector should be left open when the train is running. The large ejector can be used to more quickly increase the vacuum after coupling or heavy braking. Open the cylinder cocks to remove any water from the cylinders after the locomotive has been left standing. Water in the cylinders can damage the locomotive as it does not compress like steam. The regulator acts like the throttle for steam locomotives. It controls how much steam is delivered into the cylinders. Applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip, so increase it slowly. We're starting to pick up speed. Move the reverser toward mid-gear. This reduces the amount of steam let into the cylinders and saves energy. Come to a stop in the indicated location. Come to a stop in the indicated location.
use the combination brake to apply some braking force and bring the train to a stop. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating a steam locomotive, but there's still more to learn. If you want to dive into the specifics of how to operate a particular train, look for its training module in the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning advanced operations of a steam train, as well as basic passenger operations in a Stania 8F steam locomotive. When you are ready, set up the locomotive for driving. The reverser determines the direction of travel and how much steam is consumed as the locomotive moves. This locomotive has a combination brake that controls both steam and vacuum brakes. Steam brakes will apply on just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply to the rest of the train, so long as it's equipped with vacuum brakes. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. The small ejector should be left open when the train is running. The large ejector can be used to more quickly increase the vacuum after coupling or heavy braking. Open the cylinder cocks to remove any water from the cylinders after the locomotive has been left standing. Water in the cylinders can damage the locomotive as it does not compress like steam. The regulator acts like the throttle for steam locomotives. It controls how much steam is delivered into the cylinders. Slowly, open the regulator to apply some power. Power delivery is delayed in a steam locomotive and applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip. Starting to pick up speed, move the reverser toward mid-gear. This reduces the amount of steam let into the cylinders and saves energy. 
prepared to stop at the next station, ready to perform passenger operations. Close the regulator and gently apply the combination brake to bring the train to a stop at our destination. Great work. To allow passengers to board, you will need to open the doors. Keep the doors open to allow enough time for passengers to board the train. Now that the passengers have boarded the train, close the doors. Now let's go to the next stop.
Good work. This time, open the doors on the opposite side. Close the doors. Great job. That concludes training on passenger operations in a steam train. In this training module, you will learn how to refill this Stania 8F locomotive with water and coal before coupling up to a set of freight wagons. In this steam locomotive, the water and coal needed for operation are stored behind the cab in what's known as a tender. Firstly, you'll need to prepare the locomotive to receive water. Walk over to the water crane, where you will need to move the water hose over the rear of the locomotive's tender. Now the hose is in position, climb up the tender and open the water hatch. Insert the hose into the tender tank once the water hatch is open. Great! The hose is in, and the tender tank is ready to be filled. Turn on the water and start filling the tender tank. Okay, now you need to fill the tender with coal. Move the train so that the tender is underneath the coal tower. Great work. The locomotive is now fully cold, watered, and ready for service. Now, let's couple to the wagons. This locomotive and wagons use a hook-type coupler. Once you're close enough, you'll need to manually connect them to the locomotive. Slowly, come to a stop at the buffers of the wagons.
You can couple either on foot or using the external camera. Good work. That concludes this training module.